Hello and welcome to the video. In this video I'll be discussing one of the most popular and well-known quake. This is known to me as Vos Yana's quake, but it is also known by other names as I will reveal in this video. I will cover this by starting with some history, known factors about the yeast, and a comparison of farm and commercial strains. This is the first part of a new series where I'll be focusing on providing information about specific types of quake. I have chosen this quake type first because this is the quake that I most recommend to people to obtain to start their quake journey. So let's get started. In 1987, Sigmund Janus and his wife bought a small farm in the Voss region of Norway. He brought with him the quake that he had from his previous farm and blended this with a local quake. This mix now had three strains within it and Voss Janus quake was born. So as you can see, this particular blend is actually quite new. This quake is also very well known as being very multifunctional, hence why it is highly recommended. At low temperatures it can leave the impression of a lager profile, whereas temperatures at a higher level bring it into ale territory. The strains that I have and the experience of others have led me to feel that this averagely has a tipping point of 25 degrees Celsius or 77 degrees Fahrenheit as shown on screen now. As you can see, for a full ale profile I suggest going further at 30 degrees C or 86 degrees Fahrenheit. I have taken various farm versions just past 42 degrees Celsius or 108 degrees Fahrenheit. I've used this quake for a very large amount of beer styles like IPA, Pale Ale, Stouts, Porters, Bitters, Red Owls and so much more. It just fits where you put it. I've also used it for other beverages like wine and cider, and it just simply works. I also know people that have had great experiences with it from mead, and also melomels, or otherwise known as fruit meads. The farm versions that I've used usually allow up to about 15% ABV. In terms of the pitching rate, one shallow teaspoon or approximately 4 to 6 grams of quake will be enough to serve a batch of between 25 to 30 litres of wort. This is between 6.6 .6 to almost 8 US liquid gallons in Imperial. As I have found with most quake, this strain mix will thrive much better as an underpitch compared to normal yeast pitching rates. This is the general advice you will get here in Norway and those elsewhere with much experience of quake also. This advice is true of both the farm and commercial versions I have knowledge of. You will find that the commercial strains if you pitch the entire pouch will be a complete overpitch. Unless, of course, you are brewing over 100 litres worth of wort. This might sound bad in terms of these yeast companies involved, but really, they represent great value for money for liquid yeast in today's market. Take advantage of this while they are still in the dark about it. Having said this, some brewers even in Norway are pitching this at regular yeast pitching rates. They report a much longer lag time than those I know that under pitch including myself, but they are not experiencing issues past this point from what they tell me. Pitch more quake if it makes you feel better, but realise that it invites the inclusion of wild yeast much more than an under pitch will, considering it's faster fermentation start. Odd I know, but that is just how it is. The next advice is to ferment high and strong if you want flavour from this quake. So in general you will need to ferment in the temperature high zone and also have a wort that can produce a beer of about 10% plus. The flavour at this point becomes very much like a mild orange fruit juice, and because this quake has no bacteria there is nothing funky to be found. Commercial and isolate versions will probably vary though. In my experience fermentation will usually last between 2-3 to three days. This can slide to 3-4 to four days at temperatures lower than 25 degrees Celsius though. This quake has an average attenuation rate of 80%, which is a nice sweet spot to my mind, and do bear in mind this is just the farm version. When it comes to reculturing this farm quake, there may be some surprises in store for you. Despite this quake being recorded as a bottom harvest type on the quake registry, all the farm streams I have used have provided a plentiful top crop harvest. The thing to appreciate here is that all farm quake is subject to mutation, and after a certain point of use, farm types become quite different to each other. 
Another thing I really like about this Kveg blend is how quickly it binds together and drops to the bottom of the fermenter after fermentation. This is known as high flocculation rate and this Kveg certainly has that gift. Four farm strain versions of Kveg can be sourced from Facebook groups like the one shown on screen. If you are also a member of my channel's Facebook group then my favourite Kveg reseller is available in group and is happy to ship worldwide. Let us now look at the commercially available isolate versions of this Kveg starting with Sigmund's Vos Kveg from the Yeast Bay. This isolated strain is highly recommended by the Yeast Bay to be fermented at between 32 to 38 degrees C or 90 to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. But as you can see on screen they do say that it will be happier at lower temperatures also. This is certainly good news if you want to use it for that lager profile and I understand from people that I've spoken to who have used this yeast that it does just that, so that's nice. It has an attenuation rate of between 78 to 83 percent which is the amount of sugar in your wort as a percentage that this yeast will eat. Most beer yeast is going to be around this level with some of the drier strains going up to about 85 percent so nothing to be concerned about here. Alcohol tolerance wise the best I could find was high, which is not really enough information. Unofficially it seems that users of this yeast find that it tops out at about 12%. As you can see it does not quite match the same high temperatures and max ABV compared to the fine quake version, but it does have that high flocculation and shares the main Vos quake traits of speed and flexibility, which is great. Next up is the Omega yeast offering which came out later than the Yeast Bay version. This isolate version certainly has its fans. I've seen many users find the Omega version to have more of a pleasing orange note to it compared to the Yeast Bay version. But as always this will be subtle if you do not ferment at higher temperatures with higher alcohol. Also do keep in mind that this internet chatter is not always reliable and within the same areas of this information I found much misunderstanding of what Kveg actually is and how to actually use it. Apparently the medium flocculation rate quoted here is true which is a shame but everything else here looks on point including the 12% alcohol tolerance which has also been found with the East Bay version even though they do not quote it officially themselves. And then we have Loki A43 by Imperial Yeast. This is also Vosjana's in isolate form. This version certainly has a lower alcohol tolerance compared to the other two at just 10%. But of course that may not bother you, it just depends on what you're going to use it for. This one has a similar temperature range and it is confirmed to have that lager to L profile capability based on fermentation temperature. Brewlosophy conducted one of their own experiments on this so it is reasonably well documented online. Other sources confirm a clean and neutral ferment at lower temperatures also. Those that have pushed it higher in temperature report a mandarin orange with a touch of grapefruit flavour or some say mango from the yeast. But also I have seen that some have found that this is unstable flavour wise over time. If you are someone who does not wish to import the farm Kveg from Norway for whatever reason then I would imagine that whichever one of these three that you go for you will be happy and super impressed especially if this is your debut into Kveg fermentation. More and more retailers worldwide are stocking these Kveg isolates and yeast labs are springing up all over the world to accommodate this yeast's popularity so be sure to know that these are not the only commercial isolate strains out there. I have selected these because the Yeast Bay, Omega and Imperial Yeast is sold in many countries. If you are new to Fake then you will find many videos on my channel about this magic yeast spread out over some years. The latest one is shown on screen right now but also take a look at my playlists under Norwegian Farmhouse Ale. I also recently started a new Facebook group where this and many other beer related topics are being discussed. Check out my recent video about this group for more details. Or if you are ready to jump on board already use the shortcut method shown on screen now to apply to join. 
This now brings this video to a close. If you have any questions, then please let me know via YouTube or Facebook. I do hope that you found this video to be useful, interesting and enjoyable. If appropriate, then please like this video on YouTube, and if you've not done so already, then please subscribe. I regularly post new content. Happy brewing!